Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create this vintage looking custom carnival curtain from bygone days with your own custom text design. I provided this flourished frame and this vintage pattern for you to download so you can follow along. Their links are located in the video description or project files. I downloaded the pattern from cgtextures.com. Feel free to use a different pattern if you like. Open the flourished border and click the new layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill the empty layer with black or white. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is the foreground color, I'll press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the empty layer with black. Open your pattern and go to Edit and Define Pattern. Then click OK. Click on the tab of the frame to open it and double click on the top layer to open its layer style window. Click Pattern Overlay. Click on the arrow to open the pattern thumbnails and scroll to the bottom. The last thumbnail should be the pattern you just saved. Click on it to open it. To increase or decrease the pattern, you could either slide the scale to the right or left or type in an amount. I'll type in 30%. Then click OK. We need to make it dark. First, Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Levels. In the Black Input field, type in 90 and in the White Output field, type in 110. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again and this time choose Gradient. Click the arrow next to the gradient bar to open the thumbnails. Click the black to transparent thumbnail and click Reverse. Then click OK. Reduce the opacity to 60%. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill it with white and since white is the background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Open your gradient tool. Open the gradient thumbnails and click the gear icon to open your list of gradient presets. Click Special Effects and when you see this warning, click OK to see just the special effect gradients in the thumbnail window. Click the second gradient from the left which is named Soft Stripes and make sure the linear gradient icon is active. Go to View and make sure rulers and snap are checked. If they aren't, simply click on them to make them active. Go to the left edge of your document, press and hold Shift, and drag out a line to the right edge. Then release your cursor. Go to the ruler on the left and drag out a guideline to the center. It'll snap in place because we have snap checked. If you don't see the guideline, press Ctrl or Command H. Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to the middle of the right side and when you see a horizontal double arrow, drag it to the left until it snaps to the middle. Then press Enter or Return. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Open your Transform tool. Go to the left middle of the Transform and drag it to the right until it snaps to the right edge of the document. Merge these two layers by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 15 pixels and click OK. Go to Layer and Duplicate Layer. Click on Frame and click New. Type Displacement and click OK. Click File and Save As. Save it to your desktop as a PSD and click Save or press Enter or Return. If you see this message, click OK. 
Click the tab of the frame document to open it. Click off the eyeball next to the top layer to hide it and click the thumbnail of the pattern to make it active. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Displace the horizontal and vertical scales 5 pixels, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels, then click OK. Click the Displacement document and click Open. Notice that the pattern made a subtle but important distortion based on the tonal values of the displacement file. Drag the frame just below the top layer. Open your Horizontal Type tool and choose a font. I'm using Carnivali Freak Show Regular, which I also provided. For this font, I'll make the size 138 points, however, choose a size that works for your font and title. I'll make the anti-alias smooth and center alignment. Click on your document and type out your text. To adjust the space between characters, also known as kerning, click between those characters and press and hold Alt or Option as you press the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. To reposition your line of text, open your Move tool and move it. Go to Select and Color Range. Choose Shadows and click OK. This makes a selection of the text and the frame. Hide the text and the frame layers and click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill the selection with white and since white is the background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. To deselect it, press Ctrl or Command D. Change the blend mode to overlay and reduce the opacity to 70%. To displace your text design, press Ctrl or Command F to repeat the last filter, which, if you recall, displaced the pattern background. Drag the layer that we use for the displacement between the gradient and levels adjustment layers. Make it visible and change its blend mode to linear burn. Reduce the fill to 20%. We've just created the dark version of your vintage curtain. To create the bright spotlights that will illuminate it, first make the top layer active and make a composite snapshot of your entire image by pressing Ctrl Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Hide the composite snapshot and scroll down to the Levels Adjustment layer. Click the Levels icon to make the adjustment layer active and in the black input field type in 40 and in the white output field type in 255. Scroll up to the top and click the thumbnail of your text design to make it active. Then click the new layer icon to make a new layer. In this empty layer we'll create our first spotlight. Open your elliptical marquee tool, go to the center of your document, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift and drag out a circle approximately this size. Fill it with white and then deselect it. Go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 7 pixels and click OK or press Enter or Return. Temporarily reduce its opacity so you can see through it. To reposition it, use your Move tool. Make a copy of the spotlight and reposition the copy. Overlapping it ensures that all of the text will be bright enough to read. Once they're in position, increase the spotlight's opacity back to 100%. Next, we'll make one selection that comprises both spotlights. To do this, Control click or command click on the original thumbnail of the spotlight to make a selection of its shape. Then go to the spotlight copy and press Control Shift 
or Command Shift as you click on the thumbnail to add its selection. Hide the spotlights and make the composite snapshot visible and active. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the composite snapshot. Invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. To displace the spotlights, go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Click OK, click the displacement file, and click Open. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.